Bora TV. The world is thinking. What technologies in the next 10 years are really going to make this not just an idea, but something fundamental into the way we grow our food? The first is lighting. As lighting matures, as LEDs and OLEDs and varieties of um, electronic lighting mature, it's going to dramatically drive down cost and drive up the uh, potential for growing in environments we could never grow efficiently before. We can, where do, um, new sensors are being developed where you can t detect not just one nutrient but all nutrients and the macrobiotic sort of environment that the plants grow in to give you a, an exact and um, ideal environment to grow those plants in. And using those sensors you can automate the entire growth of plants, automate, how, automate farming, make farming easy, make farming not something that uh, is so not something that requires a farmer, but something that anyone can do without even thinking, because that's an enormous potential benefit. So, but more importantly, well, not more importantly, but as a final add addendum to all of that, the plants that we eat are going to change as well. So imagine a tomato that tastes like the most succulent tomato that you've ever had in your life, but contains all the vitamins and minerals that you need for that day. Imagine that that tomato you ordered in the morning and was fully grown by the afternoon. And in the far, far future, imagine, not the far future, in about 10 years or so. Um, <laughs> in the future, imagine that that tomato was not grown 10,000 miles away or even a mile away in the store that we showed you, but in a grow fridge in your own home, in something that you simply just open the door and grab the tomato and eat it yourself. That's the kind of future that we intend to promise. Agropolis is a new way of thinking about food production. Urban, hydroponic, environmentally conscious, and fresh. Food for a better future. Thank you. So that was the concept. Um, and they actually did a lot more development work on various parts of that. He talked sort of quickly over uh, you know, adding nutrients and adding vitamins and over various things to the tomatoes. So a couple of the key insights, obviously the converging technologies, all these things coming together allow this to be possible very, very soon. Right? Um, uh, some of the biggest ideas I think they had out there, obviously local pr food production was a key. Um, contained environment actually reduces a lot of the other needs for pesticides and things that we've, our, based, our, our food based system is based on today. The fact that we have very cheap sensors and diagnostics um, allows us to create automated systems. We can actually better track what is actually happening with food systems today. And these are technologies that most people are not really looking at. There's a $10 million um, grant going into a uh, basically a marijuana plant in Oakland, right, that is going to be one of the biggest hydroponic stations. And this is like Bay Area, right? This is going to be about as high tech as you can get. And they are still not quite to the stage of utilizing all the latest and greatest technology around sensors and tracking what you can do. So this team is actually focused on bringing all that together. Um, genetic engineering, it's, I mean, there's amazing things. There's a huge pushback from the public, obviously, around not knowing what's happening. But it's going to allow us to sustain humanity's food needs for the future. Um, and that's it. So this team is actually going to continue on developing this concept. They've been invited to speak in India in a few months, um, and it's probably going to be some kind of a hydroponic startup, and a, they're talking about trying to have a local restaurant or something sponsor a full food production unit in their space in, in the Bay Area over the next three to five years.